Today we're going to talk about the area of trapezoid. So, first off we need to remember what a trapezoid is. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. So let's think back to what parallel means. So remember that parallel sides are sides that never intersect. So if we look at these three examples of trapezoids, okay, we remember that it's quadrilateral, it has four sides, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but there's only one set of parallel sides. So this set right here, if we continued those lines on and on forever, they would never intersect. Versus, if we look at these two here, they would eventually intersect. Okay, if I look at this one, these two would never intersect. These two, if I connected them, they would. So the set of parallel sides here are the ones on the top and the bottom. And then in the third one, if I look at these two sides right here, if I kept those lines going, they would eventually intersect versus these two lines right here never would. So now for this image, it's on the right and left that we have that one set of parallel sides. Okay, steps to finding the area of a trapezoid. So our first step is going to be to identify those parallel sides. These are our two bases, our base 1 and our base 2. Then we are going to identify the perpendicular height. I'm going to highlight another different color because that's what I'm going to do when I look at the shape. Okay, so the first thing if we look at this example here, is we'd find our set of parallel sides. That's our base 1 and base 2. Then we find the height that's perpendicular to those bases. Remember, it's at a 90 degree angle. It's not a slanted height. It's not this slanted height. It's the perpendicular height. And then there's two formulas that we can use. The one that we are going to focus on, that we are going to use, is this first one. Because we're not really going to be looking at problems that have fractions in it. But if you did have a problem with fractions, this second formula would be good. So let's look at example one. Find the area of the following, show your work, include units, and round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So first thing I'm doing is I'm identifying those parallel sides. The top and bottom in this instance are our parallel sides, so those are the two bases. And then I find that 90 degree measure, which I see with the dotted line there, is my height. So yes, we can use a calculator for this unit, but you should be showing what you are plugging into the calculator. So I'm going to plug in our area equals, in parentheses, our bases added together. So my base 1, 18, plus my base 2, 12. Does the order matter there? No, because remember with addition, it's commutative, the order can be flipped around. I'm multiplying that by our perpendicular height, which is 11 and I'm dividing that by 2. So first thing we have to do, the top of the parentheses, we need to do the, or the top of the fraction, we need to do the parentheses before we multiply. So 18 plus 12 is 30, which we are going to multiply then by our height of 11 and divide by 2. So 30 plus, times 11, now we do before we divide. 30 times 11 is 330. Divided by 2 gives us an answer of 165. We're talking about yards, and area is always squared. So 165 yards squared. All right, example two, again, identifying the perpendicular, the parallel sides that will not intersect. These two lines, if we continued, would intersect. In this case, it's the right and left side that are parallel to each other. Now I gotta look at for the perpendicular measure connecting that. If we find that 90 degree angle there, it's attached with that dotted line. We've identified the three parts that we need. Now we can plug it into our formula. So the area equals base 1 plus base 2. So 46 is our base 1 plus 12 is our base 2 times that perpendicular height of 27 divided by 2. So again, we do the top of the parentheses first. I'm going to add 46 plus 12 
is 58 times our height of 27 divided by 2. I'm going to multiply before I divide here. 58 times 27 is 1,566 divided by 2 gives us a final answer of 783. We're talking about meters for our units and its area, so our units are always squared. All right, flip it around to the back here. Um, let's look at this. Find our parallel sides. This looks a little bit trickier, but if I continued this side and I continued this side on, they would intersect. If I look at these sides again, those would never intersect, even if I continued them on. So it's the right and left side here that are our parallel sides. Now we're looking for the perpendicular height. I don't see a dotted line, but I do see the 90 degree angle measure. What that means is, since there's a dotted line for the height, that this side length is actually perpendicular, and that is going to be the height of our trapezoid. So let's plug in to our formula. Area equals base 1, which is 18, plus base 2, which is 15, times the perpendicular height, which is 7, divided by 2. So we're going to add first 18 plus 15 is 33. So it's going to be 33 times our height of 7 divided by 2. We're going to multiply divide before we divide. 33 times 7 is 231 divided by 2, which when we calculate that gives us 115 and 5 tenths. Our units are feet area is always squared. So 115 and a half feet squared. Alright, one more before you move on to the U try. Again, looking for our parallel sides. In this case it's the top and the bottom that will never intersect. Looking for the perpendicular height, I see the 90 degree measure right here which has a dotted line to it connecting those bases. And let's plug into the formula. Area equals our base of 11.9 plus our base 2 of 5.5 times our height of 4.8 divided by 2. We've got decimals here, but we've got calculators to do the work for us. So if we add 11 and 9 tenths plus 5, and 5 tenths, we get 17 and 4 tenths, 17.4 times our height of 4.8 divided by 2. Well, 17.4 times 4.8 gives us 83.52 or 83 and 52 hundredths divided by 2 gives me an answer of 41 and 76 hundredths. On the front, it said to round to the nearest tenth. So when I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, I look at my tenths place, I look to the right, the six says I need to round up, so the seven rounds up to an eight, and the 41 stays 41. Our units are centimeters, and area is always squared. So 41 and 8 tenths squared. I'm going to put a squiggly equal sign there. That means it's about that. That means that we rounded our answer. Go ahead and try number one and two on your own.